Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is the 12th video in my Python programming series, and today we're going to be talking about functions. So this is a function up here. Um, we're going to talk more about the syntax and what a function does, but it's first important to understand what is a function. Well, if you're in math, you know that a function, pretty much you pass it an x value, and then it does something to that x value, and you get a y value back. Well, it's a similar idea here in Python, except there's different types of functions that can do different things. So the first function I've just written right here, uh, pretty much I've named it add to, and what happens is we give it an x value, and then it simply returns x plus 2. Now this doesn't have to make sense to you right now, I just want to show an example of what a function looks like. So if we wanted to make our own function, what we would type is we type def, this stands for definition, um, and then the function name. So maybe in this case I want to do another math related function, so I'll do subtract 2, and oops, 2 as a word, and then I'm going to put two brackets, and inside of the brackets, we're going to put something that's called a parameter. So in this case, I can name it anything I want. I'm going to put number in here, and then I'm going to do a colon. Click enter. It should tab me in one space, and I'm simply going to return x, or sorry, number, minus 2. Now, I'm, I'll talk about what all this really does um, a little bit later, but I just want to give some examples. So now, if we want to call our function, or we want to actually use these functions, we have to do something. We can't just leave it like this. I'll show you if I run this right now, nothing's going to happen. What we actually have to do is we have to do a um, call statement. So what I can do is I can do add to, and then in here, we have a parameter x. But what's actually going to happen is I have to give add to a number because we're going to add two to that number and it's going to be returned. So let's say seven. Now you'll see what's going to happen here. Uh, I'll run it quickly and nothing prints out to the screen. That's simply because we haven't printed anything. What actually happens is in this add to call statement, we have it sets x equal to 7, so it comes up here and it says, okay, we're going to add 2 to 7. So we have x here, we add 2, and then we're going to return that back down here. So pretty much we call this function and it returns it right here. Now I have to set this equal to a variable or simply print it out to the screen. So I'll set it equal to a variable right now. So I'll say new number is equal to add to 7. And now if I print out new number, like this, we get 9. Okay, so that, that's how that works. Alright, now what about subtract 2? So we can do the same thing here with 7, so we do subtract 2. We'll leave 7 in here for number, and you'll see we get 5. So that works correctly. Now I can do it again, I could do 12, and we get 10. And maybe I could even change what I want to do in these functions. So this one's called add2, but maybe I wanted to add 2 to x, and then I wanted to square it. So then I would do that. And then if we go back to the add2, so I'm going to put 12 plus 2 squared, which should be 14 squared, which will be a pretty big number, which will give us 196, just like that. So you can kind of see um, and understand how these functions are working. They have a parameter, this is what that's called up here, so a variable name, I could do x, I could do y, I could do z, doesn't matter, I can do any letter I want, any name I want, um, it makes sense to call it something that makes sense in terms of the function, so here x works fine, but if I was doing a string, so maybe we want to write another function, let's let's do another function here, and we'll do define, and we'll, call it, we'll say print string, and now inside of here I'm just going to put string like that as our parameter name and then we're simply just gonna print the string to the screen so now what actually happens is instead of setting something equal to a variable all I have to do is I have to do print string this is my call statement and then in here I'm gonna give it a string so I'm just gonna type hello and you'll see if we run the function we get hello and we didn't print it down here we just printed it from the function so I know I've gone kind of fast, but the easiest way to understand the functions are to show examples of them and how they're working. Pretty much there's a parameter. I'm going to give the parameter I'm in the argument of the call statement. So 
This in the definition of the function is called a parameter and in the call statement in between the brackets it's called an argument. Um, so those are just some key words. Now I can actually use these functions as many times as I want. So I can print string again and I could print my name is Tim just like that and you'll see it should do it twice. Yeah there we go. So that's why these functions are extremely useful. Because say for example I'm writing a big program and I know that I would need to do a certain thing multiple times. Well, I don't want to have to constantly write it out um, in the main line of my program here when I can just have a function that's going to do it for me and all I have to do is call that function using a simple call statement like this. So we haven't really done many big programs yet where functions make sense, but you'll see when you start programming that you're going to be using a lot of functions um, to do things because you're going to be repeating code. Um, now these are very basic functions. We have subtract to, add to, but you can have like f physics functions, for example. If I know I need to find the uh, acceleration of an object, then maybe I would make another function here and I do define excel. I'll just do like that, uh, short form, and then I'll put in mass and the force like that. So you see I can actually have more than one um, parameter. I can have two parameters here and I'm going to say a is equal to mass times force. I know that's not correct, but we could do something like that, mass times force. And then I could return the variable A. And now if I called my Excel function and I printed that to the screen, well, that would give me what the acceleration would be, right? Um, so that, those are just some examples of why functions are extremely useful. Well, you're going to talk more about functions. I'll do a more advanced tutorial um, a little later on, but this is just an introduction so that you can hopefully understand how they work. Pretty much you have, if you're writing a function, you have the def keyword. Um, you have the function name. So it, it, in this case, it's highlighted in blue. So I did add to. Then you have brackets. And say, for example, when we did a function we can actually do one without a parameter so I could do define do something and in here I could simply print hi right I don't need to have any parameters that just means when I call this function so do something I don't put anything inside of the brackets right we just do this and we see hi hello my name is Tim right um, so yeah, it doesn't have to have parameters. It can have multiple parameters. Um, if, for example, in this acceleration function, you have multiple parameters, that means that when you call the function, so I'll do an example here, then you're going to have to put two numbers in or two strings. So I do two comma five like that. And we'll print this to the, sh to the screen because we don't print it in that function so we can see what we're getting. So yeah, we get hi, hello, my name is Tim, and then 10, right? So acceleration to 5, okay? Um, so yeah, that's just the basics of functions. We're going to talk more about them uh, in more in-depth later, but just try to understand how they work. And yeah, so if you like the video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you again later.